did this and how I hooked it up. Make sure you click the link in the description for the previous video. How I need the box. And as you can see, it stops when it's doing its job, guys. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors. Like I said, I was gonna definitely show you guys how to install aftermarket sub or aftermarket amp to your existing system, bypass the amp for your new amp, actually be able to utilize an external amp. And so I'm gonna show you guys how you can hook it up and how you can um, get the audio that you need in order to make that happen. So of course, what you're gonna traditionally need and you don't have to buy this if you have parts around you're gonna need an amp kit now an amp kit comes with rca jacks it comes with a power source for your power wire it comes with um, a power wire um, and it comes with a ground that you will need and then it comes with uh, a remote wire so you're going to need that or source out if you have some rca jacks in the house if you um, please run a fuse um, to protect your system, your amp, and just your car in general. So if you have these laying around, you don't need an amp kit, but you will need that. In addition, you will need this right here. This is basically going to be uh, a speaker to RCA. So this is going to be one of the main key things that we're going to use to be able to catch the signal from the regular speakers and carry it over to the amp. Um, the actual sub that we have in our car carries a specific frequency um, that's broken down through the um, system crossover and amp that can support an aftermarket amp. So you would need to uh, have this right here. Um, they're really cheap. You can get some for from $5.99 to $15.99, depending on the quality that you pick. But they all work the same in general. And so this is going to be the main key thing you're going to need for the signal. So um, let's get started with how we're going to hook this up to our factory speaker. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, come to the back where the speaker is. This is the back of my car right over here. Headrest system. And this is the factory speaker. So this just pops up. So you're going to pop this off. Okay. If you have the BO system, you're going to have this extra speaker right here. Just like the one on the other side, but if you don't, you won't have this extra speaker. So you won't have to worry about anything um, if you don't have the BO system. So what you're going to do right here is I can I kind of already started it. The speaker is set up pretty easy. So basically it has actually adapters to where you can connect just a regular. Let's say, for example, if you just had a. Uh, let's say, for example, if you just had a regular speaker prong that you can push on there that's what these adapters are for so um i'm just doing a test so i just kind of spun it around right here but i connected it there but when i'm ultimately done i'm going to connect the speaker prongs to this and that way i'm going to be able to tap right into here with no issues and so i mean it's like they knew we were going to do something with this car i mean they literally have something that you can tap into it i'm right here i mean <laughs> How easy is that? So I'm going to basically tap two speaker wires into here. And then those speaker wires are going to connect to that RCA thing. So I'll show you guys in a sec. So as you guys can see from that top sub, I pretty much ran my speaker wires um, right over here. So these are going to be my two speaker wires. And so now uh, these are, this is pretty much two channels. So I only have one, so I only have one speaker. So I'm going to be using one channel. So you're going to basically connect it up um, right here. I just need to figure out which one is positive or not. Just so that you guys know the difference between positive and negative when you're dealing with speakers is that um, if you cross it, the speaker will still play if you do it backwards versus uh, positive and negative. However, the polarity is going to be different. So let's say, for example, if you have all your speakers hooked up to positive and negative, right? So what's going to happen is if you do it backwards, to put, um, what that means is whenever your speakers get a signal, it pushes out. 
Okay, and if you flip it backwards, one speaker backwards to where it's negative to positive, you know, then it's going to push inward. So the polarity in the surround sound will be off. It's not that it won't work the same. It's just that it won't coincide with the rest of the car. So you won't get a solid sound. So just letting anyone know if they ever were wondering what difference does it make if I do positive or negative. So just want to kind of put that out there. So now I'm going to basically go ahead and just hook this up to this. But before I do that, I'm just going to do a sound test on my sub uh, um, before I hook up the amp just to see if the sub is working properly. So I'm going to take these two speaker wires and I'm going to connect it to my sub, ensuring that my sub has a good signal and it's working properly in the box. And from that point, I'm going to go to the um, amp installation, which is going to be this piece right here. All right, here we go, guys. Like I said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and just first take these two speaker wires and I'm going to hook it up to the actual sub. Um, so this is just like the signal car. Um, if you ever thought about just bypassing that sub or just adding this, it will work and sound better. However, depending on the sub that you have, if it's under, um, if it's over 300 watts, two to 300, you won't get quality out of the sub because it, the amp won't give it enough power for you to be able to enjoy it. So it's kind of counterproductive. So you know, which I'm doing um, the secondary amp. In that case, I could have just replaced that one with like a kicker, Kenwood, or just like a, a really nice speaker. But the issue is if you did that, you won't get a great sound out of, so you do need an external amp. So I'm gonna do a sound test just to make sure everything is working. And then I'm gonna start um, with hooking up the, set, the system. All right. All right, guys, so I have some sound from the speaker. So that was my first test, just to make sure that I had sound from the speaker. I'm gonna just turn it up a little bit. I'm actually impressed, believe it or not, with uh, the factory output to the sub. I don't know if it's the box, but sounds pretty good, man. I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, um, turn it up so you guys can see a little bit. Copyright. So yeah, guys, I mean, ideally my goal before I hooked up the amp is to ensure that I have a good signal going to the actual sub because a lot of times when you pull um, sound from um, the actual speakers and the, the, a certain polarity, you may not get the good quality that you need. So I'm more than happy with the sound that I'm getting um, to the point uh, where honestly, if I just wanted to just upgrade the factory sub to an aftermarket speaker, I can, it's an improvement. However, you won't be able to capitalize and put it like this. You can, you can drive and be noticed, but if you just want to capitalize to where you just want to have a all around awesome sound system that is equivalent to your BO system or, you know, that it's, it's just crisp and clean. That's when you want to hook up the amp. Um, so yeah, so far so good, guys. So now it's time to hook up the amp. All right, guys. So I just cracked open my uh, amp kit. So of course you're gonna have the big 40 watt or 50 watt fuse right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, splice this power wire so that I can run the power. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run the power. And um, once I'm done with the power, you see I have the ground. So then I'm, at that point I'm going to run my ground and so uh once i'm done with the power in the ground i'm going to show you guys um where i'm going to hook up the remote wire at so right now i'm gonna spice this up this power wire to go in here and then go to my battery and then of course the other um, end is going to go to the amp so i'm going to put connectors on 
on the end of both sides. All right, you can do that really fast. I know this is self-explanatory, but I just want to show you guys each step. So, so far, basically what I did is the way these are set up, you unscrew this off and you put it in and you just kind of tighten it down and then you put this cap back on for protection for the fuse. So I basically cut the power wire. I put one end right here. I put this on here. I have this protector right here on it, but I always just put tape as an extra precautionary or you can put some heat shrink. It, it doesn't really matter. It was already secured. And so then I put it into this one right here. So this other end is gonna go to the amp. Now what I'm trying to decide right now um, and this is very important while you're doing this is um, how you're going to run your wires to hide them and how much um, length you need. So I'm going to do extra length and just kind of gauge how much length I need and where I'm going to put my amp at so I can ultimately know um, where to put this. Right, so I just decided to put my amp right there for right now. At any point, I can, you know, tie it up there or put it. You know somewhere else in my car but i'm just gonna put it right here for right now i'm gonna eventually do a full custom trunk run lines for my air suspension and everything so right now this would be fine for me i really don't put too much in my trunk but you know in the event that i wanted to really hide my amp you know i could definitely let's say if i wanted to it's even already closed up here if i wanted to just kind of put the amp up there that would be a really good spot to put the amp um so i may eventually put it right there but right now i'm just going to put it at the bottom until i'm done but look it actually lines up with some of the holes that's in my car so that's pretty cool so i just made for this wow it actually perfectly lines up with some of those holes all right yeah so it's like they made this car to be upgraded <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do with this end, so the other end is going to go to the battery. And as you can see right here, it says battery. I'm going to put the battery right here. Um, right there, it says battery. I'm going to put battery right there. So I'm going to cut up one of those U's and put the U here and then put it right there. All right, guys. So, so far, as you can see, it's simple. And I know I'm being basic, but this is the first time for a lot of people. So, so far, this is going to go to the battery. I basically could cut the wire in half and put two ends to the fuse. And then this one is going to go to where it says battery. Okay. So now I'm going to focus on the ground. So now it's time to find the ground. And then I'm going to run the ground from here to my ground. I'm not going to connect the negative terminal for the ground. I'm going to find a standalone ground and I'll show you which one that I already found that I'm going to use. My battery and this is going to be the ground that I'm going to use to ground it. Uh, you, you really don't want to go straight to the negative terminal. You always want to just find an external ground. Uh, so I'm going to connect the ground where the factory ground is, which is right here. And um, I'm going to connect that back to the amp pretty simple so far right guys uh, and this is a perfect ground uh, for your system so you just put it right on there and you put that bolt right back on there and you'll be good to go now the other end right here is going to go right over here to where it says ground on the system and that's how i'm going to hook up the power and the ground and then next i'll show you where I'm going to tag the remote wire. All right, guys, so now I have the remote wire. So what the remote wire is, it's the actual uh, wire that turns on the amplifier. So anytime, like for example, if you had a traditional radio, anytime the radio will come on, the remote wire will turn on the radio. So that's what a remote wire is. So um, I'm going to hook it up to a fuse over here in this fuse box that turns on when the car turns on that way it will turn on uh that way it will turn on anytime i need it to be on you know however there's some amps that have auto you know um turn on from just a power source so it depends on what amp you have but i found that sometimes those are not consistent so i always hardwire remote wire um, so I'm going to just connect it to a fuse right over here. All right. I okay, hooked it up to the negative terminal in my car. So as you can see, I'm touching this. 
So as you, so I just went ahead and hooked up to negative terminal in my car, but as you can see, I'm touching this power, power, power. So this one doesn't have power, power, power. So now I'm going to turn off my car and which, whichever one doesn't light up, then I'm going to use that one because that means that the power will turn off when my car turns off. If you understand what I'm saying. All right. All right, guys, so I turned my car off. So now that I turn my car off, I'm going to see if I get power out of any of these. And if I still get power, that's not the one I'm going to use because what's going to happen is I'm, my amp is going to stay on and that will potentially drain my battery and get hot. So touch this one. So this one is a good one. I'm not getting any power from this one. Touch this one. I'm not getting any power for this one. Not getting any power from this one. So ideally, all of these are pretty good fuse sources. I'm just going to use this one right here. And they're all working pretty good. So I'm going to use this one just to see. You see how that one is still on? See, I wouldn't want to use that one. I want to use one that turns on with the car. See what I'm saying? All right. So remember, so far I got my power. I got my ground. And I have my remote wire that I'm going to connect to that. The best thing to do is get one of those fuse adapters um, to plug into this and then put the fuse adapter into and put that into the fuse adapter. So you don't have to tap in or you can just kind of wire it and just shove the fuse in there. But it's, it's more professional to use that fuse adapter. So just to give you guys an idea, when I say fuse adapter, that's a fuse adapter right there. So that's what you would put into that one and put your fuse into that one. That's um, more cleaner just to keep it professional. All right, guys, so let me show you the madness right now. So don't worry about those wires. You guys know I got a system. I got wires. I got a lot of junk going to my So um, don't worry about the black wire. So as you can see, I have the blue power wire. I have my ground. You see the ground is right there. Um, I have my remote wire going to that one. So I'm going to go ahead and lower it so you guys can just see it for a second. So, as you can see, the amp is on. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go turn the car off. I'm going to go turn the car off to see if the amp turns off and on. You guys will be able to see it, but I won't. But I'm going to turn it off and on to see if the amp turns on and off. So, once again, my objective was to power it up and give it a good remote. So, let's check it out, guys. And like I said, I'm going to clean all this up. I'm just, just showing you guys how to hook the system up. So yeah, I know it can be cleaner and neater, but this is me just simply showing you guys. One sec. All right, guys, so I just turned my car off and the amp turned off. That's exactly what I want. I only want the amp to be on when my car is on and off when my car is off, so perfect. So far, so good, guys. So now we're gonna to get to the fun part. We're gonna to get to hooking up this speaker to see what we can do. So right now, what's gonna happen is these two speaker wires right here are gonna be the speaker wires that are gonna come from here and they're gonna to go to the actual subwoofer box. So this is gonna be the speaker wires that's gonna go from here to the subwoofer box. And I'll show you guys in one second. All right, guys, so I just hooked up the positive and the negative speaker wire to the amp. So remember, power, ground, remote to right there, power and negative to the speaker. So now this right here is going to go to the actual speaker box, to the positive and negative. All right, like I said, all right, like, so, like I said, guys. Um, this is showing you guys how to hook it up. I'm going to do a sound test. It's nighttime. Just let you guys see it's nighttime right now. So I'm going to do the sound test in the morning. Um, it will be on this video. So I'll do the sound test. It may be just daytime when you see the sound test. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, hook this up to the speaker. And then I'm going to show you how you get the sound from the car to the speaker. All right, here we go. Now I have that hooked up. I'm just going to back this up. I'm not clipping it in yet because I'm doing a demonstration. And so now we're going to turn this amp around. 
And so now on the amp on the back side, you have your subwoofer remote control. You have your bass boost. You have whatever hertz you want to run it. And you have your low pass filter. You have your min, minimum to maximum. And then you have your um, sensitivity. And then you have your left line in and line out. And then this is a high. So in case you did not want to use RCAs and you wanted to go straight speaker wire to the amp, that's what this high level uh, left and right is. You just basically, they have an adapter that plugs in and you can connect the speaker straight there. Some amps have this, some do not. So I'm just showing you guys how to do it with the RCA because most amps have the RCA and not the high input. But they work the same so i'm going to go ahead and um now get this speaker wire and i'm going to connect it to those rcas i showed you guys and then i'm going to plug it into there and we're going to be rocking and rolling all right guys like i said um the way that this works is one side is for one speaker and the other side is for the other speaker you can so basically you can bridge it if you want to and put it to two channels however i'm just going to put my sub to one channel i don't need my sub to two channels but i could have put it to two channels you know just by connecting the, the negative with the negative on both of these and the positive and i could have plugged it into two channels um left and right but i have one speaker so i don't need the left and right so what i'm going to do is just pick this side right over here and i'm going to connect the black to the black and then i'm going to connect the power to the power all right so that's the next step All right, guys, so as you can see, I hooked this one side up uh, right here to the gray ones and the gray, uh, the, to the gray ones and the gray ones are this one. So now all I have to do is just hook this to the RCA and then the RCA to that. And now I, I'm gonna get that audio output from my factory sub and it is the same frequency. Um, I did my research, so it's not going to have an issue with being able to get the proper sound that you need. So here we go. I'm going to hook that up. Right, so I plugged it into the black RCA, and I plugged the black RCA into the amp. So now I'm going to be able to get the signal from my car that's going to go through the amp and then give me the new sound to my speaker versus, pre versus previously how I had it coming straight from the car. Now I have an amp to power the speaker to capitalize on the sound. But first, I'm going to connect the bass boost button up so I can control the bass. I have a bass boost on your specific uh, amplifier. However, I do on this one. So I'm, the last piece to the puzzle is hooking this up and then testing out the system. Right now, everything is just a rough drive before I put everything in this um, allocated spot just to show you guys that it works properly. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. It's just a phone cord that goes into right there. Once I have it hooked up, I can start adjusting the levels. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, guys, all right, guys. As promised, as promised, I went to uh, some sort of an excluded area so you guys can actually hear how the speaker sounds with the amplifier hooked up to it. I went ahead and hooked up the amplifier to this back part. As you can see, there's my air suspension, and I hooked it up to this back part of my seat so I can adjust the levels um, just until I'm done with my trunk setup. So let's go ahead and see the amp and how the RCAs are taking the communication and if we're getting a good response from the speaker, basically seeing if we're going to be able to dump this speaker. The whole goal is to be able to have the extra bass in the car. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the back and let you see the speaker move. All right.
it so I won't get copyrighted. But yeah, guys, as you can see, it's stumping pretty hard. Um, I'm very impressed with, you know, how it came out. Um, I've, I've had systems when I was younger um, all my life, and I just really felt like Audi just kind of dropped the ball on just the overall base. So this whole series from part one, making the box, to actually hearing what the box can do, um, this is solely to improve your experience in your vehicle. Um, I'm, I'm in your vehicle, so uh, make sure you like and subscribe, share the video. Let's continue to push this channel to the next level. Uh, um, I, I appreciate all the love and the support from you guys. You guys mean a lot to me. I'm gonna have some merch coming soon. Yeah. So yeah, guys, um, thanks a million. This is Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors. Peace, I'm out.